Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Sapna Rise. I'm Natasha and uh, we have someone very special with us today. We have Stuti Gupta. This, uh, oh wow. Hi, Hi Natasha. I'm introducing you and you joined. I'm sorry, your voice was cracking a little. I said I was just introducing you and you joined. Oh, I joined in, in the, at the very right time then. Let me know what you were saying about me. <laughs> so, in fact, I was just telling the viewers uh, about, you know, who the guest is. And uh, to everyone who've tuned in, welcome to another episode of Sapna Rise. This is a very special uh, episode because we were supposed to have it earlier. But due to a te technical difficulty, we rescheduled it. So, here we are. We have Stuti Gupta with us. So Stuti has been a storyteller since I think uh, from her childhood. She's been into storytelling and reading books. And she's penned three beautiful books on Indian mythology for children, on fa fables and on stories for kids. So Stuti, welcome to Sapna Rise. Thank you so much, Natasha. I can't tell you how thrilled I am. <laughs> when the event got rescheduled the last time, I was so heartbroken and I couldn't wait for this day enough. I am really, really happy and thrilled to be here. Thank you so much for having me. No, I think uh, I'm excited today because this uh, I've personally read the book and I know how, you know, it transported me back to childhood tales that my grandmother used to tell me, tales that my mother used to tell me. And these stories are actually so close to your heart because you can read them at any given point in life and feel so happy. Oh, so true. You know, most of the people who read it have got back saying that not just kids, but adults and people of all ages have enjoyed this book just as much. And it's such a joy to know that you uh, <laughs> enjoy reading it too. And you could Absolutely. relive your childhood a little bit of the book. Quickly introducing everyone to the book. Uh, we're talking about magical mythologies and these are fascinating stories of epic characters. This is a new book that Stuti has penned and uh, Stuti, would you like to tell us a little about the book, you know, in case somebody doesn't know? Sure. Uh, this book is called uh, Magical Mythology. It has 23 short stories about uh, gods, goddesses and characters from the Ramayana and Mahabharata. Um, these stories are not the usual that you've heard. It's a mix of some unheard, unknown, unique stories and some very common known stories. So I think uh, the thrill of reading something new uh, is uh, comes and joins hands with something that you've been hearing for all along. And uh, this is uh, this was written in mind thinking that this is going to be for kids. But when I finished writing it, I realized that I had loved writing it so much. I was pretty sure that even adults were going to enjoy it. And um, this, this book is beautifully illustrated also, you know, every story has a small illustration to go with it uh, and uh, small lessons and puzzles and coloring pages. So I thought this was uh, like this uh, magic pot that a child or an adult could get and enjoy it thoroughly from uh, the first page to the last. Absolutely. I think uh, the best part about the book is, you know, it actually takes you back to your childhood. It's basically a pathway to retrace your steps, go back in time. You know, there's a lot of nostalgia here. Obviously, uh, one thing that I really have to point out is you bring back Indian mythology in today's times of gadgets and mobile phones and tablets and games, you know, that uh, the kids are surrounded with. So this is something... Uh, fresh where you know they're reading light at the same time you're chasing them back to our roots thank you it, uh, it thrills me to know that that message goes across because that's a very personal learning that i have uh, taken from uh, my own child and narrating stories to the children around me in the family i realized that there are a lot of glass slipper, slippers and magic wands and uh, you know cottages and all those fairies, but we don't know too much about the Indian side of fairy tales or mythological stories. And um, there, there was a point when I um, remember people used to tell me, Aap apne, uh, ko, uh, is type ki story sunate ho. they are going to lag behind, they are not <laughs> going to be competitive with the other kids. And I used to be like, those other stories have nothing for you to take away. These stories are like entertaining, educational and 
if you if you're really dealing with a child or even an adult just who concentration may problem hoti hai these stories i think can bring back that uh, uh, lost uh, touch with our concentration spans also we grew up reading and listening to these stories and i think we turned out fine pretty fine yes i think we are doing pretty well <laughs> absolutely and in fact i think panchatantras have been the basis of my childhood because those are the stories that i continuously listen to from my mom and you know the best part yes. of these stories is they come with a meaning yes and you know you're not driving home the meaning uh, with a hammer yeah. in your hand you're subtly telling them that this is how it works so let's say panchatantra uses animal imagery more often children love animals so if you tell them that the that the rabbit was smart enough to outdo a lion they will learn that even if you are small you can go and defeat someone who's far stronger or bigger you don't need to drive home that point they learn it on their own that's the beauty of it <laughs> so uh, stuti tell me how did this book come to happen you know how did this idea of 23 short stories eight characters and you know these are loved characters so how did this thought come to you i think a lot of things got mixed up um the starting happened way back i think in about 2008 and 9 when i was working on an encyclopedia of hinduism i am an editor by profession you know that i mean uh, i'll tell the viewers also that i've been an editor for almost 14 years now so i was editing an encyclopedia of hinduism and i used to read these stories there then when i did my uh, mphil thesis i read ramayan like seven different ramayans because my focus on, was uh, on the character of ravan and i was fascinated i think the way i looked at ravan changed completely after i finished my mphil now if somebody comes and tells me dashera hai ravan jalane i'd be like please mat jalao he was not such a bad guy you know so then i thought that maybe there is an, there is another side to it and uh, we need to uh, give it a voice I think it finally took a form when my son uh, got hooked to these stories. He used to demand a story at every meal time when he slept. He needs a new story every day. So I think that's how I came up with this concept that the other parents maybe who are struggling to get their children's attention towards book or books or mythology or Indian stories, they could uh, really help this. So that's how we crystallized this idea into a book. wow I originally mean, we planned to have a lot many characters but i think there were so many stories we had to really fight to ki kaun sa include kare kaun sa rehne de because uh, you know that's always a battle mujhe to sab achhi lag rahi thi you know i loved everything and then i had to put a stop because uh, we had to think of other factors also but i think this collection for me is like the perfect combination uh, for the stories that i could put together absolutely having read the book myself i know how it's so beautiful because each of these stories you've actually done a character sketch in the beginning or an introduction to each chapter or each story that you've narrated so you know when a kid is reading it he's he or she's not clueless that what am i reading and you know you you've tied it back to these different uh, common stories that we've all heard of like uh, ganesh ji takes uh, the product productionas of his parents you know that whole story yeah. why modaks like why is a modak used during ganesh chaturthi it's simple things like these you actually talked about them in the chapters so not only is this a storytelling process but it's also informative you know yes it is i mean a lot of things that we think are not making sense they suddenly start falling together like pieces of a puzzle <laughs> yeah absolutely uh you know uh, most of these uh, at the end of the each chapter you have certain activities So would you like to take us through that process and how did you incorporate such a smart thing because when a child is reading at the end of it there's some activity for her or him to do Uh you know I I have used this device in my previous book also it's called uh, popular indian fairy tales so every story was broken down into sections and after every section there was a set of questions for instance there's a woodcutter and he's standing in the forest and some fairies ask him that if you stay with us for a year we are going to give you all riches so now he is at a point where he has to choose to go back to his family where there are little kids who will never know where he went or he can choose to stay with the fairies so before he takes the decision i put in a questionnaire where i ask what do you think he should do so maybe you don't have the right answer there is no right or wrong answer to it but it will make you think 
and the whole point of developing a child's intellect i think is to make them think they're smart enough to outdo all of us together so uh, when when you make them think they can do wonders so i do this with my son also i tell him a story and then i ask him something out of it so i want you to give that same kind of feeling to the readers also because for me as a storyteller no story is complete without connecting on the basis of the story the story becomes a medium uh, for propagating let's say a deeper idea so these activities help uh, memory retention i i don't know if you remember there's a there's a crossword yeah so when you read the hint and you want to put in you will remember that one fact uh, for quite a while it's like a revision happening without you knowing that it's actually a revision in your head wow i think that's a very divisive and a smart way of uh, recollecting things that you the child has learned actually i think anything that is visually graphic and attractive kids will somehow store it in their visual memory and then they will remember it from there that's very smart suti and uh, most importantly at each chapter towards the end you've actually given like a small lesson and those lessons are not uh, coming from the characters it's something that you've generally written as a take away from the story um, i think all storytellers have this habit na thoda gyan to baantna padta hai otherwise when they start feeling incomplete oh kuch reh gaya hai and uh, since this was uh, conceptualized for children you know uh, my motive was to not keep it preachy at all for instance there's one chapter where it says your parents will do anything for you Yeah. that is a feeling that kids understand after a really long time in life you and i included i guess we take it for granted but when you read something like that you're bound to think about it a little so i think these were those small things that i wanted to uh, make them think about that wow. i practically face with my kid and uh, kids around me uh stuti there's a beautiful comment as we speak uh it's by uh, snashwin kartik Uh, he says hi stuti can we expect an indian jk rowling from you <laughs> hi ashwin it's so good to have you here uh, ashwin is a fellow author also and uh, um jk rowling is creating <laughs> a fictional world you know i am bringing an already existent world out to those who don't know about it and that's the only difference the thing is that my magic works in bringing it forward and not creating it as such wow stuti do you think indian mythology has been a subject or a genre that's not been uh, given the you know um, it's not as read as it used to be earlier in today's times do you feel like it's fading away a little bit given the modernization and how you know kids are access kids have access to so many things right now i think there are two sides to this coin um one is that uh, with the coming of nuclear families more and more those lessons coming from grandparents are kind of reducing and taking a back foot your grandparents would rather do a video call and check with you and see how you're growing rather than telling you stories online you know yeah. so that is the practical aspect of how we are lagging there but there is a flip side where a lot of uh, publishers and um, you know individuals have taken it upon themselves to revive this culture so i've also seen comics and graphic novels on mythological characters there's an entire graphic novel called ravanayan which is almost i think 5 6 years ago it was released and it was a straight off hit because you know when you see something so graphically and you're reading about it it obviously is more interesting so uh, and uh, mr devdutt patnaik's books they yeah. broke the jinx around mythology that it's not making sense it's all in the past let's forget about it so i think you making uh, the contemporary need of it felt uh was the key and a lot of people are trying their hand to do it so we are kind of working and making a balance i think uh, we'll end up uh, making it heavier on the mythology side in a few years hopefully i think uh, one thing that i want to definitely ask you is you talked about eight different characters and these are like the most favorite of our indian mythology from our indian mythology so who is your favorite character personally and which is a chapter that you enjoyed writing personally uh, you know i'll tell you it's very difficult to pick a favorite character because uh uh we've grown up hearing and watching uh, ramayan on tv or you know uh, shri krishna and all so i think all the characters are just as lovable um 
in the book we've also taken uh, you know episodes from their childhood yeah. and adulthood so it's a very mix bag of cute stories of all of them but i think one where i resonate uh, the most uh, with is where devi ram wants the moon and because it happens with kids all the time they'll ask you for the most difficult of things and they expect you to magically do it so there's this one instance where devi ram is uh, staring at the moon it's a full moon night and mother kaushalya goes to him and says uh, why are you so sad today and he says i want a new toy so she said that's not that's not a problem i asked the toy maker to carve you a horse out of wood she says no i don't want a horse so what do you want i want the moon she is in a fix how can i get you the moon she says no that's not possible but then he says i won't eat if you don't get me the moon so then she thinks of something like all mothers she comes with a plan and she gets a vessel full of water and places it at an angle where ram can see the reflection of the moon in the water so he starts splashing in the water and thinks that he's actually playing with it and his mood also lifts up so because i have to employ such tricks by the dozens every day with my own child i think that uh, resonated a lot with me and one uh, consistent feedback that i got for uh, that particular story was that uh, this illustration yeah. of uh, baby ram and mother kaushalya reminded a lot of people of me and my son he has yeah. big eyes like the baby ram in the picture <laughs> so i think that's also why i am closer to this particular story that's such a sweet thing <laughs> This was actually very coincidental. Um, I mean, the designer sent me the initial design. I was like, "Yes, we'll lock it as it is." The baby <laughs> looks too cute. Yeah, I most of the illustrations on the book in the book they're so fresh, and you know, even as adults, you really want to go through them, sit, and actually see them. Yes, the illustrations are done by Ishan Trivedi. He's a dear friend. and he's done a wonderful job i couldn't have thanked him enough for this the book i think gets half the magic because of the illustrations it wouldn't have been the same without it i think all of this uh, just ties the book together your illustrations yeah. the activities the description at the okay. i think uh, the best part of each chapter for me personally was a small character sketch that you've given you've actually had a diagram of each of these characters yeah. and given like a small character sketch that's so smart and thoughtful you know like, we in, initially started off yeah i'll we started off with the thought that we are going to make a table right. but then we thought the table is going to be so boring so we decided to have an infographic yes yeah. which could tell you what is the festival associated with the god um, who are his parents or his or her parents and you know these little things that you need to know um when when we're writing a book you know i as an editor also i my basic premise is ki kitab padhne wale ko aapke subject ke bare mein kuch nahi pata so you write it in a way that it appeals to everyone yeah. i think that's where this explanation in an interesting format came forward because we wanted to also give some bearing to the parents who were going to narrate these stories to their kids but uh, as i said earlier this is something that just ties the book together in such a beautiful way because it's a wholesome experience you're giving a character sketch you're narrating different stories from each of the character and at the same time you're giving like a life lesson you're giving at the end of it like a small activity to do so i think this is something that a child will not forget or you know it will it will be like a really solid recall for him or him or her to actually read the whole book that makes me feel so happy that makes uh, every moment that i spent on the book worth the experience wow would you like us like to take us through the journey of writing the book you have a small child how was it to you know pen a book <laughs> in such a situation uh then because in my job also i'm reading the entire day you know it creates a lot of chaos in my mind right uh in fact when i started conceptualizing the uh, book the research part of it was done in a month and it took me close to 2 years to put this book together because i had to write in bits and pieces i had to wait for my son to sleep so that i could write and some days i was just too tired to do that and then uh, i had to shift houses in between a lot of other things came up so it in total took me close to 2 years to finish this and uh, now that my son is a little more grown up i'm also working on another book again for children and i'm trying to bring bring something very uh, 
core uh, indian into its pages it's still uh, getting finalized so i'm not going to say more than that but i'm very thrilled at the kind of uh, feedback i'm getting for this one so i'm sure that people are going to love that too so they won't believe in fact we actually ran a contest on our page uh you know asking audience certain certain questions so we ran like three stories with a question each and we received yeah. such phenomenal response our dms were flooded the uh, you know number of people who answer these questions were in hundreds and we were surprised because we've not seen this kind of a participation before so uh <laughs> you know we actually ran a contest and we thought we would actually give out signed copies of uh, people who are you know answering the questions correctly so uh, st- would you like to actually give out the winner names i will i will in fact i was thrilled when you told me about the contest and to know that a lot of new kind of and god based questions was actually very uh, it made me very happy it just goes to so- show that people are still interested so out of uh, right. all of you who have answered the questions correctly we have picked out three winners um the first one is uh, bharat gowda and goes by the handle uh, dbharat uh, underscore and then the second one is uh, mehul kothari the third one is uh, pratham prathu wow congratulations to all the winners congratulations <laughs> I think uh, yes and thank you so much for participating in great numbers and uh, I I feel really honored and special when people uh, do such a thing not just because of the book or the response that the book is getting but also because the story by reaching out to more people Suti I think uh, what I'd like to tell the winners is somebody from the team will reach out to them and we'll arrange for a signed copy uh, you know from your side to reach them and that's going to be their gift wonderful <laughs> it's going to be amazing please when you receive your copies or even if you're watching uh, do reach out to me uh, you can send me a message there's my email id inside the book uh, storyteller suti at gmail please do reach out it's always very very encouraging to hear from readers also if anybody wants to pick up the copy of a book, of this book it's available across all sapna book house outlets it's also available on sapnaonline.com that's our e-commerce store so you can either walk into the stores or place an order online but i personally recommend this because if you're a child or if you're like if you're a child this is a must read if you're a parent this is something you should read to your kids and if you're an adult this is something that will take you back in time and bring back those grandmother's tales so you should get this book and please if you get an opportunity do walk into a sapna store and do that i think that has been on my to do list ever since the beginning of last year and then somehow the lockdown and everything's pushed my plans i've heard so much about it. i've seen so many pictures people tag you and they walk in and they show off you know that this is such a nice store it's like a book paradise book lovers killy this is heaven and i just sit here feeling jealous that i am not able to do that so those of you who do have access please do walk in and grab a copy That's very sweet of you Stuti. I think we should maybe for your next book we'll do like an in-store session. Oh yes, I'd love to. I just uh, grab the first opportunity that I get to come there. <laughs> yeah, hopefully the situation is better at that point. Yes, hopefully. There's one comment by Watch Free coach I really want to address. Uh he or she says wish you could write about Ravana. Uh in fact there's a whole chapter about Ravana in this book so please do read it. and then we have you can uh, write stories about ravan i can just go on and on writing about ravan because i've read a lot about him in all the seven ramayans that i was reading since my topic of research was ravan but uh, surprisingly that will be giving you only one side of the story and that never is a fulfilling experience for a storyteller <laughs> right there's another comment by summer that says your book is of a new vision after seeing the flow chart Oh yes you know you have to keep up with the trends if you give uh, um you know it's like if you give a uh, very silly example that i'll give you if you make some porridge for your child and you tell him that this is dalia he'll be like i don't eat dalia if you add nuts to it and you add strawberries to it and you say this is porridge then they'll quickly grab it 
Yeah. So while the content is exactly the same, we're just changing changing the packaging a little to reach out to a uh, wider audience. <laughs> There's another comment by Akshima. She says, "Tuti, your book is an amazing read. My favorite part was Sita as the daughter of Ravana." Thank you, Akshima. A lot of people used to be taken aback. Yeah. When I said that at first, and then you know they'd be like, "What kind of a made-up fictional story it is?" But there are a lot of versions. I'll say a lot of things. Uh, Stuti, there was one fun fact that I realized. Uh, you know, when I was researching about you, and in fact, when we were speaking, you've done your MPhil in mythology, and you've read the Ram. Like you've read seven different versions of the Ramayan. It start playing with my head at one point. You know. <laughs> one version ram cannot kill ravan because uh, ravan is a brahman and uh, brahma hatya cannot fall on ram said uh-huh. so lakshman kills ravan and i'm like okay. this is like changing the ramayan for me i was like exactly. exactly. ram kills ravan what is this happening this is like a south indian version more closer to the jain uh, perspective also where um, you cannot uh, go to heaven if you have brahma hatya on your head and then there was one where sita takes the form of kali and kills a thousand headed ravan because the ten headed dragon had a brother which people did not know about so okay. it is called adbhut ramayan so it was really adbhut in that sense you know it just uh, i used to be baffled and fascinated so that is also one of the reasons why i decided to put these stories together and uh, bring it out but it must have taken so much patience to actually read seven different versions of this book it took me close to one year doing my research of only reading and reading and nothing else so it must be exciting but i think it was a very it was very enjoyable it was very enjoyable the more i read about it the more fascinated i became right. because uh, we as kids i mean i in my case particularly my father was always telling us stories from mythology i think most of kabir ke dohe and uh, um, rahim ke dohe i've learned from my father because he used to uh, just walk around the house and tell us uh, those so i heard about ravan from him in fact the idea that i work on ravan's character came from my mother so you can imagine the kind of rich environments that i was a part of growing up so i just wanted to give that same kind of experience to a lot of other people but you know exploring the chapter as C- which mentions sita's daughter of ravana that was something so enlightening for me it actually fits you know it actually makes sense when you think of it it's a different perspective yes i think it is very essential in life to have a dual perspective of things it just uh, enables decision making in a better way very true uh, watch freak has another comment for you he says uh, have you covered the buddhist version of ramayana yes i have i have also uh, uh, covered actually um, when i wanted to look at uh, the spectrum to study i wanted to take in as many different uh, opinions as possible so i took one ramayan which is from the east of india one from the south one was valmiki's ramayan because well that was the uh, original to say it and ramcharit manas then i took uh, the jain ramayan also by vimal suri i also took uh, the buddhist ramayan into uh, perspective because uh, it it was it has to be all inclusive because these are mostly stories that are traveling from one part of uh, india to the other and they start getting these elements together when suppose they reach the east there is a, do- a devi dominant area so you start seeing more power uh, resting with sita she can become kali uh, ram is worshiping the goddess instead of worshiping shiv when he is getting set to fight so you get these local flavors in uh, version so i have actually um, taken all that into account wow I think that's brilliant, and uh, I can imagine how much research and how much effort you've put in, you know, to e- not only write this book but to complete your MPhil by reading so many books. I think people who are uh, addicted to reading and are passionate about it love this the most. They can read as many books as they want. <laughs> that's true. We have a very sweet comment by Vipul. He says it's a must book to keep my little monster occupied and be a good listener. The chapters are awesome and also the illustrations. That is very sweet. 
I just hope a lot of other little monsters also can stay occupied with the book and the illustration. I think for people, for the kids who can't read themselves already, the illustrations act as a big uh, bonus. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so, Stuti, you've actually written three books around uh, this genre, around children for children. Uh, is there any particular message that you want to give out to parents or children, or is there any? um you know reason why you're writing these uh, books is there any agenda in your mind uh see initially when i started off with it uh, the motive that i have in my had in my mind was to keep my son away from gadgets you know he was uh, very little and i used to see other children glued to the television that we won't eat if you don't switch on the television and it used to scare me so much My son hadn't even reached that stage. He was still, you know, an infant maybe, and I used to get all paranoid about it. So I think there were a couple of techniques that I started following. One was that uh, just so he can hear the same rhymes and uh, not, uh, you know, lag there, I started using a Bluetooth speaker. So the speaker was placed far off. I played the same poem, so he knew all of them, but he hadn't seen them. Hmm. So he knew them all by heart. so as any and there are others are saying something that he not be able to and the other thing was that uh, you have to work i think on the the whole voice modulation thing and try to connect these stories uh, uh, so that they generally stay connected one thing that i'd like to show you that i do with my son is i tell him a story and then we paint about it together so we were reading about oh. an elephant who was eating 10 bunches of bananas so we painted this together oh wow So you know what he thinks that the story is not just about what I'm hearing, but also what I'm going to do with Mama later. So it's giving me very, very. It's giving me very, very good quality time with my son, and he's grown very fond of my voice so much so that at times I'm really tired and I want to sleep, and he'll be like, "Mama, I'm going to tell you that story again." And sometimes he hears that story back to back twice, thrice, and I'm like. Please, आज मैं नहीं सुना सकती हूँ लेकिन मुझे आपसे ही सुनना है यू नो सो दैट टाइप ऑफ थिंग ऑल्सो हैपन्स बट दैट इज द थ्रिल आई एटलीस्ट सी हिम गेटिंग बुक टू बुक्स इन स्टोरी एंड दैट वॉज माई ओनली मोटिव सो आई सी माई सेल्फ सक्सीडिंग देर आई थिंक फेलो पेरेंट्स कैन यूज दिस टिप्स टू absolutely in fact i was just going to ask you that was my next question you know the children read very few books these days they're hooked on to phones and gadgets and games and you know everything is so technology driven these days that you barely see your child playing outside in the hot sun you barely see a child without a gadget you know scribbling and drawing the way we used to do it so are there any tips for parents or for you know uh parents who are expecting how can they tackle this issue in the modern day i think my husband and i put our heads together and uh, thought of these tricks that we could do the first thing that we read a lot and we know for sure is that the child is not going to follow what you say but actually what you do so if they see you on their phone or laptop they are going to do the same thing they want to do the same thing if they see you with a book they want to do the same thing So you know, for starters, when you are in front of them, Natasha, I think you know this. Every time we had to get on a call, I'd never pick it up in one go because I have no clue where my phone is. Sometimes, especially when I'm at home, it is a completely chaotic situation with my phone. I have no idea where it is. So I think that's the first thing that you lead by example. The second is uh, you make stories fun. So every time I've I've used this hook phrase uh, to. Uh, you know get my son's attention that there's a new story starting so every time i see him trying to go towards the tv or trying to say i just say aapko pata hai and he quickly turn towards me that she's going to tell me something that i don't know and i'm like kya yeah, mama and then you can start narrating a story you make up stories out of things that they are doing i made up a story my son loves potatoes and uh, so we created a character called puchki who loves potatoes and every time his mother goes and asks him what do you want to eat he'd say Potato, 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 potato. So we started doing this on the dinner table. Yeah. Every time he said, "I want to eat potatoes," he he do it like this, and okay. then I tell him how other foods are more important too, and you need to balance your diet and eat everything. So these small things that you see every day, you just need to rope them in and go crazy. Basically, there is no <laughs> formula. You just need to go crazy. 
but these are such smart uh, things that you've been doing especially the whole painting and drawing thing i think that is something that i'm going to keep in mind it's a beautiful thing that you've done earlier i remember our parents my father used to tell me if you read the story you write down the points or the the dialogues that you found best and i okay. still know uh, children in the family who maintain diaries who write these quotes down and uh, now i think it's flipped we need to take that to art yeah otherwise writing gets a very monotonous and boring kind of thing especially with the whole online classes thing you know uh, yeah. people want a break that's true that's true but i think uh, with painting and with such things away from the whole uh, technology aspect it's i think the recall also increases you know your hand eye coordination so many things there's so many benefits of actually reading and painting and drawing and doing all these things see it is it is going to be messy it is really going to be messy we made there was this one instance where we made a caterpillar out of uh, the egg carton box oh wow we cut it we painted it we put matchsticks and everything i just could manage to flick a picture and he had torn it away so you know i was left so hard broken i shared it in my story <laughs> Let's see. We made a caterpillar. In thirty seconds, the other story was, and it's dead because that's the only time that it took for it. So it's going to be very messy and frustrating at times, you know. But uh, it's it's a learning process for both the kids and the parents. So the more time you spend together doing uh, fun stuff, the better the bonding. Stories are a great way to bond. When you're reading out stories together, they verbally pick up the stories. Sometimes the, my son is three. and this is personal experience he'll open a book and it will look like he's reading the story word by word but he doesn't know how to read he's never been to school till now he's just memorized it because i was reading it like that and he's heard it like say four five times wow uh, are there any tips for you that you're giving out like are there any tips that you can share for children to inculcate storytelling as a habit like you know listening to stories most of the kids are so impatient they don't sit they don't listen or for you know parents who are struggling to inculcate this habit of storytelling at night so is is there any uh, thing that you would like to share in terms of storytelling particularly um i think the easiest way is to uh, start with audios that are attractive your child okay. can be comfortable with any kind of uh, mode you know uh, like my son says i he needs to hear it in my voice that the other kids would be like nahi hame to ye gaane wala hi sunna hai so there are a lot of but use a bluetooth speaker i'd say or use a phone speaker instead of showing them the video so that they know that they're getting a story but they are getting it in a format that's safer for them ha wow. uh, you know so that also works like a trick i remember there was once very old uh, um hindi movie song uh, pictureized on meena kumari so you can imagine how old that is yeah. so she's singing chal mere ghode tik 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 and there's a little kid My son used to love that because uh, there is such a narrative flow in the song. Suddenly she is saying, "Chalte, chalte, uske aage aaya ek pahar," and my son would go, "Ki pahar aage hai, toh kya hoga?" So you know, maybe you can pick up these songs that are already there, older songs like "Lakdi ki kathi" and "Nani teri morni ko mor lega." These are catchy songs that you can pick up, or local songs that um, you've been hearing around the house. They act as a hook in the beginning then you can slowly graduate to books or narratives reading okay. out the stories pick up books which which have interesting pictures so while you're reading they can see what is happening and associate what you're saying with what they're seeing right. i think that really helps stuti i must compliment you you have such a beautiful voice you <laughs> while you were singing you were <laughs> listening, <laughs> listening to the lyrics i was just listening to your voice a watch free agrees with me uh there's a comment that Sorry? says you have such a yeah. there's a comment that says you have such a soothing voice wish you could publish the same as audio books <laughs> thank you in fact the first book uh, um under my name which is uh, 101 best indian fables that's also available as an audio book it is not in my voice but i'm sure whoever the voice over uh, artist is has done justice to it wow. i um, I've been thinking of actually starting off with some videos that are storytelling videos for kids, 
but uh, the only hindrance is that while i keep telling people to stay away from videos i don't want to propagate the same channel you know that's the only thing that's holding me back um otherwise hearing stories is a great great way of learning for kids yeah in fact there was a comment that just uh, mr vipul had posted asking us about any plans of live storytelling sessions for kids in the near future i think that answers him yeah and uh, we have a comment it is actually by... tricky yes please see instagram is not going to be accessible to kids actually yeah it's going to be accessible to parents so like i said it's the dilemma you know if i want to be seen by the kid they'll have to watch a screen and i really feel very uh, hesitant in doing that yeah maybe you could uh, do like a podcast yes yeah see then again it's uh, uh, with a child and uh, if i want to write and uh, with a job you know <laughs> that kind of takes a uh, toll sometimes but i have all these ideas in my head it's just the execution that's taking me forever <laughs> but now that so many people are saying you know i'm really going to think about it more seriously yeah i think uh, one thing that i would definitely want to tell you is you have a beautiful voice thank you thank you so much my son wouldn't agree when i get angry uh, he says you don't sound good at all mama when you are angry <laughs> that's so sweet we have one comment by aru he says i think reading habits of children is derived from their parents actions if kids see parents stuck to their phones they learn the same so kudos to you stuti for creating such an interest in reading thank you aru you've been uh, really helpful with the books that you've been doing stuti lastly i really want to ask you this you've been in the editing industry for 14 years you've been an editor for such a long time and then transitioning that to being a writer um how did you take the big leap was it difficult or i think you're balancing the two together right now so how has it been going for you um i see initially from the beginning of my career i've been editing very serious uh, books from fiction to non fiction okay. mostly now uh, um a lot of books for the adults basically and everybody used to ask me when are you going to write one of your own because you know we read so much and we are full of ideas and we know what people are reading we get that inside edge uh, being in the industry but somehow i could never feel motivated to write in that genre when when i uh, started exploring this area of writing for children i was not just fascinated but i couldn't stop it was something that kept happening and uh, my office people have been very supportive a roop for starters if it was not for a roop i wouldn't have finished writing magical mythology he literally uh, pushed me into finishing it i have been postponing the deadlines because you know uh, with the personal and professional getting uh, that balance becomes tougher but uh, they all made sure that uh, i i did it and a lot of other people also in the office at my home my parents my brothers my husband more so because half the time that i was guy up with the book then he had to take care of the child you know so i think it it all came together like that the inspiration that came my mother in law for that matter has been a teacher for nursery kids for uh, more than 3 decades and okay she said i've been dealing with children and i think you'll do a great job if you do this so i've been getting learning and inspiration from everybody to go ahead and do this stuti i think uh, i must say after this session and especially after listening to you it's been so inspiring it's also been so enlightening to see you apply so many different things to keep your child engaged the things you and especially the things you've put into the book so it's a, a very thoughtful thing you know your process of parenting at the same time the process of writing the book has been very very thoughtful thank you thank you so much you know like they say it takes a village to raise a child this book <laughs> is also i think just going under my name but uh, like i said the anecdotes that i've heard from my father and my mother and the puzzles a couple of them were actually designed by my sister in law so you know it's just it's a very big joint effort that has come together in the form of this book because we all felt so passionately about stories right i can see that you know it's actually coming through in the book yes thank you 
so stuti thank you so much for your time today i think it was such an enlightening session and i personally enjoyed it uh, i hope a lot of people buy the book uh, this is the name of the book magical mythology please go pick it up from the nearest sapna book house outlet and if you are not if you don't have access to the stores you can definitely order it online but please go show some love to stuti <laughs> Yes, can you grab a copy, um, Natasha? I am really happy that you had me here for this discussion. The kind of fond love that I've had for Sapna from so far <laughs> off, at least it helped this much to come close to my dream of you know being with associated with Sapna in some way. When things get better, I'm going to definitely walk in, meet you all, and uh, uh, take take this big step too. But in the meantime, please uh, buy your copies from Sapna or their online portals. Get in touch with me. If you have a child and you need more help with them, especially with respect to stories, I am always open uh, to uh, you and ready with some tips that you can use. Thank you so much, Tuti, from all of us at Sapna Bookstore. We wish you all the best, and hopefully, we'll. Thank you, Nanda. Yes, I hope so too. Let's let's hope that happens uh, by the time the next book is out, so that we can do something more energetic and. Uh, live uh, with the audience at the store sometime. Absolutely. Thank I you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to all the viewers for uh, staying here and <laughs> commenting and asking such interesting questions. Thank you, Suti. Thank you. Thank you.